Hi, everyone. This week, we are chatting with the amazing Jeff Zapata. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hi there. Yeah. He yeah. is an artist, writer, film producer, and is mostly known for his Garbage Pail Kids artwork, Wacky Packages, and Mars Attacks. Welcome to the show, Jeff. It's great to have Hi. you on board. Thanks. Hello, Thanks. Jeff. So give us a little bit of background on, on who you, you are, of course, an artist, and you've worked for many companies, and you've also done comic books as well as sketch cards. So you, you've kind of got a nice broad background there. Let, let us know a little bit what you do, where, where you come from. Um, well, I'm from New York. I'm a Manhattanite. You know, I grew up in Manhattan, and I sort of had... Um, a great opportunity as a child to live halfway in the city and then move to the suburbs. And um, so I, and yet my parents had businesses in the city and I would work in, you know, even though we lived in the suburbs later on, I would still be in the city all the time. Um, so it was great to have, to know city life and suburban life and, um, and that kind of helped me, um, I think drawing in a way where if you just live in the suburbs, if you don't know the city, um, you don't know the rooftops and, and the gritty streets or something, and you might have to need a photo, you know, with city gut people, it's in our head, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So it was, it was good just to have those two environments growing up. And, um, I, and about but, living near a big city reason, as well, you have access and, to. Yeah, and the reason why I was in, why I'm saying Manhattan, is because that's where um, I was a comic book fan since I was a kid. Always loved comic books, and um, when I was in art um, in high school, I had an art teacher that influenced me greatly, named Mrs. Class, no less, Sharon Class. And she, it was her who really pushed me into like, you should go to art school um, and you should do something with this. And she you helped me get in, into the School of Visual Arts um, where I stood for like, a, I learned from some of the best, including Will Eisner, um, um, Gene Colan, and anyone who knows comic books would be like, oh my God, these guys were gods and um, some others at the time. But if it wasn't for being in New York, New York is where all the comic book publishing was being done. DC Comics, Marvel Comics. Um, what years the, are we talking about here? Yeah, and, and independent. Um, and when I was getting into comic, it was when independent comics started branching out. And there was one, um, I don't know if you ever heard the artist named Neil Adams. Yes. He did that for years. He had a company named Continuity, which was on 47th Street, I believe. No, on 40, 45th or 46th, I forgot. Um, but um, right next to him was a audio store named Sound City. So while I was in college, I would work as a stock boy at, in this TV store. I'm getting to a point here. And, um, and I was in art school, but um, I was a stock boy for TVs. And you remember at the time they had big projection TVs and they would be like in huge boxes. And then with all this blank space with just a little RCA in the bottom, but it would be like huge. And I would stack them up and get my room my stock room all set up, you know, I was a young kid, you know, um, my first job, you know, so I tried to do my best. But there were um, low times. So what I would do is draw whole page comic books on the side of these. Um, and this is a good lesson for you people if you want to know how to get into the art business, because what it is, draw, 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 draw. And, Great. and what you're doing, oh. and what and what you're doing is leave it around or whatever, because you're kind of sending a message in a bottle and you never know if it goes to the right person. And this is one of those stories where 
you let you send a message in the bottle and it goes to exactly the right person. So anyway, so I'm in the stock room and I would draw these comic books. And one of my greatest idols were Neil Adams, who I did not know had a company that was right next to the store. So um, he was a big influence of mine. So I was drawing these whole Batman comics on the side of these huge TVs, um, like Neil Adams almost, because I knew his style. I could draw you a Batman in five seconds in his style because I just grew up with it and I just loved it. And at the time that was my thing. Um, so I left that job, actually ended up going to Fordham University later on. And, um, and that's another story. But while I was there, I get a phone call. This is like maybe a year or two later. And I get a phone call and the phone call is from my old job from Sound City saying, hey, we got a call from this guy, Neil Adams. And he says he wants to meet you. And I thought they were kidding, you know, I'm like, you know, because we used to joke around. I used to actually call in once in a while and say, hey, this is Eddie Van Halen. I need a TV. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, right. No, this is Eddie Van Halen, you know. And then they were full of like Teddy Van Halen, you know, because we, we used to get celebrities. So I was used to pranks. So I was like, yeah, right. You know, whatever. And he's like, no, Neil Adams. I'm like, you know, who Neil Adams is. No, we don't, you know, but he has a company next door. And I'm like, well, what happened? He says he bought one of your TVs and that had your drawings on them that we used to tell you not to do. <laughs> <laughs> And um, he saw, he was wondering who drew this on this box. I need to meet this person. And, and sure enough, I was in a completely different place. Uh, and I had to go back to my old job. And sure enough, it was Neil Adams. I might be hearing about it. Sorry. And that must have been amazing. How, how did it, that feel? It was, a kind, was a kindness of somebody who, are, who found a bottle and said, wow, this guy's on a deserted island. We need to save him. That's amazing. And, um, and he says, you shouldn't be doing whatever you're doing. And he's like, you should be an artist. He says, you can't work for me because you're not good enough yet. But I do know a place that could hire you and you'd be great. So he wrote me a letter, which I still have somewhere. And they say, Neil Adams does this for nobody. But um, he gave me a letter and um, to go to a place called Valiant Comics. Oh, my God. Wow. And, um, and go to a person named Bob Layton, who's another famous Marvel artist for Iron Man. He's probably on a lot of those Iron Man DVD discs, the movies, since a lot of it is influenced on his stuff. You know, so... Um, and he became my first boss in comics. All he did was read the letter and he said, you're hired. Wow. wow. And the letter was only this big. What and did you do saw, with He just saw Neil Adams and he just, you're hired. That's and incredible. That was, what a story. Wow. And then I when quit my high, I quit my high paying job to work in the office of Valiant, but it was such an education. It was, and I, and I said, screw art school too, actually. I, I, uh, I was on my third year too. And, um, but I, fin I went to Fordham where that's a different story, but anyway. But with Neil, um, when I got into Valiant, they taught me everything. You know, they were like, are you gonna start answering phones? You know, that sort of thing. But we want you to look around and start learning and stuff like that. And sometimes I'll be drawing on my reception desk and everything and getting to know new artists because I'll be the first one they talk to and agents and stuff. And um, then I became the personal assistant of the president of the company. Um, another interesting person, um, Steve Mazarski, um, rest in peace. Um, and I became his assistant. And I was like, hey, I came here to draw, you know, but. I wanted to learn, so I just would do pinups and stuff like that of the characters that they had. Um, 
And the art director was like, wow, that's really good. His name was Don Perlin. Um, another famous um, comic book artist who did G.I. Joe, Spider-Man, you name it, very famous. And him and Bob Layton pretty much put me, took me under their wing and started teaching me how to draw correctly. You know, it's like, you know this, but this is how you do this. And this is how you do that. And, and you know, introduced me to a light box, you know. Um, These are all things you don't learn in art school, actually. No, it was straight from people who were like, if you want to learn how to draw comics, this is how. And I remember I'd be drawing and Bob Layton would come in and he would have a full suit. And, um, and Bob Layton was pretty much who Tony Stark is. You ever seen Tony Stark um, in the Iron Man movies? That's Bob Layton. He, wa he was Tony Stark. And, um, and so he dressed you know, to the nines to work and had great hair and all that, you know, like a movie star. But he would see me drawing and then he would get his on his hands and knees, well, not on his hands, on his knees because I had a low reception test. He'd be like, hey, Jeff, do it like this and, and do that and do that. And I felt so um, um, honored that such a, a, the big boss of the company was the editor in chief but also um, someone like that would take the time to get on their knees and show me how to do something. And, and we're, still, we're still friends, we're still good friends. And he's always, you know, when I got into Tops, first thing he said, he's like, what happened with the comics? You were supposed to be the next, you know, they thought, they thought I was gonna be like the next Jim Lee or the, the next uh, person. And they were grooming me for that. And, um, and I was sitting at home and I quit my, um, I quit going um, Valiant. Yeah, I quit Valiant and then, oh, I quit Valiant. And then I went to another company called Crusade Comics and met another good friend of mine named Billy Tucci. And we did a comic book called, um, what well, he did, he created, um, he created and, um, oh, there goes Thor. He created and um, and drew uh, uh, a comic book called She. Yeah. And um, and sometimes you know I would design the ads. I would design ads, and that's when I started oh. learning about marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. And that was great about when I went to Crusade. When I got that offer was a bigger offer where I wasn't in the bullpen in Valiant, even though I got some work published. Um, I would have to do backgrounds, lettering, um, balloons, um, fill in panels because some inkers didn't want to do the panels. They just wanted the ink of everything. And then we would have to do the panels and, uh, and white out certain things, you know, touch ups. And that's when I got to meet Joe Casada, who became editor in chief. In, wow, in, uh, that's a big name. Even I've heard of that. <laughs> um, I got I knew all these guys. We were all we all started from almost the same area. I don't know if you know Garth Ennis, who does. Oh preach. yeah, preach yeah. yeah, yeah. One of my best friends. Uh, we we, wow. we we were one of the first people to hire him when he moved to the states. I'm watching I mean, the show, actually. Favorite comics. One of my yeah. favorites. I could tell you so many stories. Oh, my God. And it was also, and another important person in my life during that time was Tony Bedard, who was the, a writer at, um, at Valiant and an editor. And um, we became really good, like, close friends, like brothers. And when he, and, I, and he's the one that got me the job at Crusade because he moved to Crusade. And said, you know, you want to be an assistant editor? And I'm like, sure. So, and we became very close, um, um, like family. Him and his wife, and um, and whatever whoever I was dating at the time, well, would always, you know, go out together. You know, it became, and then all of us it was it was almost like friends. We would all meet up at a bar, and every famous person now that. 
I could talk about was there and I knew them, you know, and Stan Lee, and, uh, all these guys, I, I uh, John would meet people that I admired and wanted to be with, you know. Um, so you really were a part of that foundation community at that time in those years. You really and, and it's it's prices. It's like being in the Warner Brothers cartoon studios in the 40s or something. You know, um, or may, when you're making Bugs Bunny cartoons, you know, and you got to meet all these famous people during, you know, so I kind of felt like I would uh, always say like um, Forrest Gump. I was just always that guy in the background. Jeff Zapata was there. Look, Jeff Zapata was there. He was there. There, there he was there. And, um, and also, just to let you know, like, uh, this is a sketch card cover that we designed. And this is in the 90s. Yeah, and this, the is, 90s, yeah. this is this is a ninety, so there was a sketch cover in the nineties. So, um, for those of you who are not who are listening to the audio podcast, you really have to go and come and see the video for this because it's just some gorgeous artwork here that is surrounding you. Please go on. Oh, thank you kindly. I appreciate that. And um, I also met J. G. Jones. I'm looking in, and um, so, and you'll see my name in, in these comic books. Um, How did all of this? But, uh, you know, it's just an editor, if you could look. Oh, cool. And, um, and later on, I became an editor and, and would do like a whole editorial in the back of the page called Jets, whatever. And, um, but I, you know, I should never have been a comic book editor because I, I wasn't never really good at um. Well, at the time I wasn't, you know, I needed to learn uh, storytelling and all of that um, as far as writing, you know, and all that. And I got to learn that, which I could always suggest books for people um, on what about writing is. And I think having, hey, Sin, having, uh, having to be uh, around writers like Garth and, and, and the late great Steve Ellis, wherever you are, pal, I miss you. Um, how did uh, all of this so amazing bring it back memories of people that are <laughs> yes. some of them are gone you know what i mean so um it would be so... great if you wanted to leave a, a list of of links to some of the books that these amazing people that you've known maybe people would like to look them up including <laughs> some of your stuff oh first off i'll ask anyone uh, look up billy tucci um crusade um crusade comics he's still he's still running he's still doing stuff um, and he's also a friend of mine um, and uh, my, my ex-boss. And but if it wasn't for him um, hiring me and uh, being able to play with his characters as far as editorially and learn the editorial business from, from the ground up was um, priceless. And uh, I have to thank him for that, for, for letting me, you know, mess up his books. <laughs> you know how but, did, uh, how I, i'm sorry how did how did all of this lead you to the garbage pail kids and well, um, mars attacks and sketch cards in general what, what are, well, are sketch cards well, just a frivolous thing or well, i'll tell you how the beginning of sketch cards as well at least for tops um and that's why i had to talk to you about all these people that i know because it, it, everything i'm telling you is all going to tie in you're like oh he's rambling and then you're going to say oh um because i'm just leading you up to the, to the <laughs> good stuff um so like i said we're in crusade and um i left crusade um um after being for a few years and um ooh, we'll that later. but after being there for a few years um i needed to do something different and I was thinking of maybe being an art agent. And I was an art agent for, for a few months, maybe six months. And I, and I couldn't believe I was making money doing that because I knew all the colors. I knew all the inkers. I knew all the artists. So I would get them like, you know, hey, you know, call Joe Casada and be like, you know, there's this guy, J.G. Jones, you should check out. He's really good. And he's like, wow, he is great. You know, we'll use him, you know. And uh, years later, when I asked him for a job, he wouldn't give me so. <laughs> 
but that's a, but I, but I hear, but I hear he's, he did that with everyone from that, you know, so I don't, there's nothing against him. He, he did great work for, I, I, was, he, I, I'm a fan of his work and editorially and artistically, but, um, but I think that's a joke. I've always would see him and be like, Hey, can I get a job? Can I get a job? <laughs> so it may be just, you know, but, um, but that being said, um, I was at crusade and I was at home and I'm wondering what to do. I said, well, maybe I should take this art, um, um, agent sort of thing and, and see if I can make a business out of it, you know, cause I, I hated taking something, uh, an artist, like a piece from their, you know, the way that I would get paid is like, whatever you get paid, give me like a hundred bucks or something out of it, you know, for getting you the job, you know, give me a, you know, commission. yeah, just some kind of thing. Cause there's a, it was a little work involved to make sure they get the job. So, and all of a sudden I get a phone call and it's from, um, a gentleman, I'm trying to remember his name uh, on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, it was a gentleman at, at Tops who, who uh, worked there. And he says, are you Jeff Spada? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, well, this is the Tops company. So, top, you know, because I remember trading cards, but like when you hear Tops, especially in Manhattan, there's a store called Tops and all that. And, what you know, that? yeah, I think they sell electronics or something. So, so I'm just like top. So at first I'm thinking that, you know, and not, didn't put the two together yet. So he's like, yeah, um, we got your name from a guy named Stan Mataloni, another important person, um, thank, thanks to him, who I worked in comic books. You know, in comic books, you have to hire designers. Um, and this is also going to come in. Um, um, so we used to hire Matt a design and these are the people where you send the art and they put the book in digital form, you know, so you can send it to the printer, you know, that sort of thing, or make a logo for the comic, you know, that sort of thing. And so I made good friends over there and he just said, Hey, if you're looking for an editor, I know someone that's Jeff. So they called me for that reason. And I didn't know what they wanted me to edit. And they're like, have you ever heard of star Wars? I'm like, yeah. You know, you know, they're making a new movie, right? And I'm like, yeah. It's like, it's called episode one. And I'm like, yeah. And I, cause I heard all the hoopla about at the time, episode one was like such an anticipated project where people was just saying, oh, they're filming it. You know, oh my God, they can't wait. Everybody already bought their tickets. It was the biggest thing. It was like a, it was like a, a mushroom cloud of excitement for this movie. So I'm um, those people who were excited. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not taking it seriously. And plus I wasn't I was I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm I'm a Trekkie first. <laughs> Where I like I like Star Wars. I love Star Wars. It was good. But I you know it, you say Star Trek, I light up, you know. Um so anyway, but I was like, yeah, you know. Well, anyway, at Tops, you know, we do trading cards and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. But however, we also do the souvenir magazines for movies. So like you ever go to back in the day to a newsstand and you would see like a magazine devoted to a, a new blockbuster movie. And I'll tell you all the making of, and, you know, all the people involved and all of that. And they would call it, it's almost like a program book that you could buy off the newsstand and all movies would have it. Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, Star Wars, you know, that sort of thing. And, um, and it became a thing where when a movie came out, you would produce the souvenir magazine and you would get all the material that people don't have showing behind the scenes, describe who the producer is, the director, articles like that. Um, talking about the whole production. And they're like, we want you to edit this book. And you need to sign an agreement because you'll be seeing scenes and images of the new Star Wars movie before anyone. Yeah. I'm just going to stay, listen to that. Yeah, yeah. totally. 
imagine how quiet I was. Yep. So, <laughs> and I was like, sure. What year I'll was this? And I'll come down and meet you. Um, trying to remember his name, but he was at the time the office manager um, who would hire editors, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but I will. Um, if you're ever watching this, um, I wish I knew his name. But he left Tops later on. Maybe that's why I forgot. But anyway, that was my first Tops product was making the Star Wars souvenir magazine. And what what know. year was this? Just so to place my head, my silly little head. What year I, was this about? I think it was 2000. I might have one handy. Hold on. Okay. Um. Yeah, I do. Wow. That's my so sister. Wonderful. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's my first I, I've seen that book. Tops. Yep. I think I have a, a copy of that. And this is, you know, the souvenir magazine shows everything, you know. And what people don't know, I also designed the ad. Okay. For the first, for the first Phantom Menace card set. <sighs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would have to, I think I, I would have to design the cards at the time just with what we had. And, but what I would do, and what was great, what they loved was that they had a guy that knew how to draw. So I would draw the ads and then give it to the designer and be like, you know, so that's why they have so much, you know, it's not like a design. Yeah. Like I drew this guy and then I drew the cards laying out coming out of the path. Yeah. And it, you know, and did all the placement as if it was a comic book cover, really. Um, and that's when I started learning how to do advertising. Well, not it wasn't that's where I learned, but that's the stuff I learned when I was doing um crusade ads and stuff. So yeah. besides um editing the thing he's like wow the guy can also do ads and do the ads and and design stuff and and do things and i remember doing doing licensing later for other products where they would say whether it was spider-man the movie or uh, um the x-men when i did the x-men movie card set um editing wise they would give us images. They say, you can't use them. You can't use them. So what I would do is use comic book tricks that I learned where like for the X-Men, we did a similar thing for the X-Men. So like, I just showed you this. So this is how I started with Tops. And you'll see if anyone who buys this book, you'll see my name, managing editor, uh, Jeff Zapata. And what was great, I had so many people from high school start calling me. I haven't heard from years. They're like, did you do the the store? And I'm like, holy congratulations, because they knew I was an artist, but they didn't know like, I didn't know how much this was going to be all over the place. And people I never heard of was buying it. I haven't heard of it since I was six or something, calling me up saying, oh my God, is that you? And they're, you know, and it was a proud moment, I got to say. And, and being able to go to the premiere and seeing everyone waiting online for days and I'm able to sh see it the day before them. And then when I came out, I felt sorry for them. <laughs> oh, no. Spoilers all the way down the line. I'm sorry. I didn't like the move. So I, 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 I was seeing it and I was excited. I remember I was with this other, and we were excited that we saw it. We're like, wow, that was great. And we came out saying it was great, you know. But then when I was seeing all the people outside, I'm like, I don't know if it was so great for three, you know, to be outside for three or four weeks. And then we kept walking and walking, but we were so excited of being at a premiere of Star Wars in Manhattan. I forgot the name of the theater. It's not there anymore, but it was a famous theater. And, um, and as we were walking, we were just like, just sort of doing the plot and saying the scene and what we didn't like. And then by the time I got to the subway and we split out and I was going down, I was like, I don't think this movie is going to be received. Well. And I said that to myself, you know, and I'm like, 
and I just did all this for this book, you know, and it probably won't be remembered as, you know, who knows. But I kind of had that a little in my mind, but I was still, you know, when, when, if you see a free movie, you love it anyway, because it's free and you're the first one to get to see it. And I would be, actually, that's one of several um, movie premieres that I've been in, you know, and get to mingle with the stars after, which was great. They would be an after party and you get to hang out and Danny DeVito's there, Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston gave me a letter when I met him when I was doing Planet of the Apes. And I met him and this is how classy a guy he was. Just a quick conversation, great talking to you, shook his hand, you know. And um, a few days later, I get a note and it says Charlton Heston on the top stationary. And he says, Jeff, you know, to Jeff Zapata, it was great meeting you the other day during the premiere. And I hope you, great success for you um, and your career um, in the trading card industry. And um, looking forward to seeing this set. All the best, Charles. And he, and he did it in marker, Charlton Heston is. So you could tell like, it wasn't a pen or something, just bounced something around and, and signed it. And I had it for years and then someone stole it. Um, I had it hanging. <gasps> it was part of, um, I'm, I got ripped off of my collection twice in my life. And it really changed my life when you have your memories taken away from you like that, oh, yeah. you know? Um, and that was the first time. The second time was a few years ago when I moved and when I got my stuff, everything I did for GPK for all the years work was missing. It was all gone. Oh no. The person who did it just denied it and has a good um, outlook in the community. So nobody would believe me, you know what I mean? So, and, and, and I think he took that. He's like, who's gonna believe you? You know, that sort of thing, you know? So that's what happened. That's, cool. anyway, that's, that's, that's not, sucks. let's get to continuing that's with the topic. Me, <laughs> um, let's go to continue with the topic. So then um, one day, well, so I started as really a marketing advertising guy and, um, and able to edit certain things. And then my first card set was Xena, the Warrior Princess. Oh, cool. And it was their second um, set. And that's when I started learning about um, talking to studios and getting talent to do autographs and learning the language and the diplomacy of that, which is always delicate. And, um, and sometimes you have to deal with the actors directly. I've got a good Tobey Maguire one. Um, it wasn't directly, but, um, and also a Ben Affleck one. That's like, I never used to love his acting until I did a trading card set of Daredevil. And I got to know his mother and, and him through his mother. And what it was, nobody wanted to sign. Jennifer Garner wouldn't do it. She wanted, twenty thousand dollars for a time and tops wanted to pay them like three dollars a signature or something like that um and, but it was also i think part of their deal when they sign on to the book to deal with partners of the movie and we were partners as far as licensing you know we licensed to do the movie and you know part of your contract is that you have to help us somewhat you know what i mean and, and sometimes it would be like, it's up to the agent or whatever. But this one was, nobody wanted to do it. I'm like, I, and I was telling my boss at the time, Ira Friedman, another important um, person at Tops who still works there and uh, a good friend of mine. Um, I, I worked by his side for 13 years. So um, my captain, my captain, um, but, um, these people, you know, it would be hard to get people to sign sometimes. And I would just go to Iron saying, I don't know what to do. I don't have any autographs for this. And this is how we're going to get into sketch cards, too. So um, we don't have any autographs, you know. So before Tops did sketch cards, they did autographs. 
you know, that was close, that's the closest thing they did to any um, hand written thing, putting on a card. And um, so I was talking to Ben Affleck's mom and I was telling her my father, like, nobody wants to do it. I don't know what to do. And, and I'm like, probably gonna get fired, I don't know. But she was that type of lady where you could just, I don't know, I felt nice. And she says, well, Ben's a great comic book fan. And, you know, and he wants to do it, you know, even though it's cheap. And he knows that if he signs, everybody else is gonna sign. And he wants you, and he wants you and this product to succeed. So I told him, because I told him about you. And, and he said, he'll do it. And after that, I said, Ben Affleck is the nicest guy in the freaking world. Wow. And then I appreciated his acting even more. I got to look at him fresh as a, you know, as a human being. And what it is, is acting is a human being. He's a human being, you know, and he is um, in, in real life. Uh, a generous, kind person and has the nicest mother I've ever met in my life where she, um, she does, they, she, she, he grew up with a nice mom, you know, so. Um, now my Spider-Man quick story, trying to get signatures was uh, that everybody would do it, but Spider-Man. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah. And I'm like, and I was having problems with, he didn't want us to use, actually we didn't get him to do autographs, um, to do any signatures. I don't even know if we did any, yeah. I'm not sure if we got him to do any signatures on that one. But what was hard was just even getting images. So we had a set with no Spider-Man. And it wasn't because the producers didn't, want it but they said it's up to him he has to approve every image and every he didn't like any image of spider-man and some what of them oh I, not no i wouldn't say that i'm not going to call anybody name you know who knows his reasons but um and then you know there were shots that i would do um with these movies like i said some of them were unusable so I would refix them where they are usable because I was an artist and I had ideas of how to fix things and all that. And X-Men was the same problem. They're like, we don't want everybody to see all the costumes yet. And I, I know we need an, you need an ad, but we just have these heads and we don't know what to do with them, you know, but you can't show them, you know, in the light or anything. So we don't know what you can do with this, you know? And I said, oh, I know what to do. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, take each one, put well, airbrush shadow in their face where you just see the height and you could see, you know, like natural lighting, you know, shading, you know, as if dramatic. Show half of their face, you know, three on this side, three on this side and show one big X in the middle. And just by their half of their face and the shadow, you know who it is. You know, and they're like, this is great. And they ended up using it for their, besides for our ad, they used it in newspapers and, and all this other stuff where like, you know, you would solve problems for them yeah. that their art department for some reason didn't do. And that happened a lot with the Spider-Man stuff too, where they said, we have this, but we can't use it. So I'm like, no, you can do it. You know, well, it gets cropped, you know, the film shows that it's cropped. And I'm like, look, I could draw a fake, hand in photoshop use the the tool and sometimes i'll take his right hand and just flip it and i'll put it on his left hand and it'll look the same thing and now it's not cropped anymore and now it looks like he has both hands and he's flying at you I'm like that's great next thing you know it's in the newspaper you know <laughs> i'm like that's my shot you know that would be but, your, your your background in graphic design that would help you actually i think right practical so and we're getting closer to the sketch card um, intro to all this. So, um, so I knew all this stuff, you know, I, you know, I was a good problem solver in, in anything and also good idea. And they also used me to make up names. They always made me 
I, they would drag me. I would help every department, even though I only worked in one department, which was NPD. It was called New Product, New Product Development. So I would design candies, toys, some that never made it, Pokemon toys, designs, um, try to make new candy, con what we call um, confectionery. Um, um, God, I forgot the name. But it's where it's a function. It's also play. It's playable, you know. And um, so, so I used to design all that stuff and do ads, um, take out the garbage, um, <laughs> serve everyone coffee. No, but at tops, you ended up wearing so many hats. It was it was crazy. It was one of the most stressful, most chaotic, devouring um job ever had in my life it was you were on that there was no such thing as a nine to five you worked when you got home you worked there were times i would wake get there it would be dark and i would leave and it would be dark you know and um and that was depressing so um after you know we'll get back to the years later for that but that was sort of you know tops so they started seeing another company did comic book artists drawing on cardstock. I forgot which company did it. And they pretty much were the first people to do sketch cards um, in period. And this is probably early, late 90s by then. You know, this late 90s were that cards that. Was it something we'll, called Skybox or something like that? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't know who was the first ones to do it, but some it could have been. That sounds about right. But um, they didn't have the same distribution as Tops or or that. But they did this experiment of let's have low, you know, let's have artists draw on um, cards for our Marvel set and get Marvel artists to do drawings on, you know? And, and that became sort of a hit, you know, for a small company and Tops took notice of that and said, wow, you know, what are they doing? What is these sketch card things are about? And that was my job to figure what are sketch cards, you know? And I knew a little bit from them, you know, and, at, and also at the time you got to think there wasn't a lot of, internet discussion, a lot of Facebook pages, people putting up their artwork or any of that yet. You know, um, there was the internet, but it wasn't as, you know, as it is now. So as, you know, social media wasn't really there yet. It was the prehistoric age, the 20th century. It was just the start, it was just the start. So, um, I saw who they did and I knew who they were. And um, because I was in comics. That brings back the comic book story. And what happened when I was in comics? I was around all these legends that I knew. And since I was a kid and all that stuff. And now Topps has the Marvel license. And they're like, we want to do sketch cards. How do we do it? So I designed the first sketch card. And what I did was let's pretend it's a cover of a comic book. And what we'll do is get Marvel to give us the logos of characters of their comic. We'll have an airbrushy kind of um, frame, you know, with a white fade space. Because at the time, you weren't expecting a painting. You were expecting just a pencil. If you got a pencil drawing, you're happy because it's more of a signature as well. Because if you just got a signature of this artist, you'd be happy, you know, because they're that famous. You know what I mean? So having a um, actual drawing and the signature was a big deal. So Tops wanted to, so I created the sketch card program and I made up rules and stuff like that and I made up the design and I got I called up my friends Don Perlin John Ramita 
um, who did Spider-Man for years um, in the 60s. He did all the stuff that people remember as Spider-Man during the 60s. You know, um, he is the Spider-Man artist, even though he didn't, he wasn't the first one. Steve Ditko and John Romita are considered the Spider-Man artists. Steve Ditko was the first guy to do Spider-Man, but he quit early in the series, like maybe issue 10, 12, something like that. And then John Romita took over from there. And his son took over after him drawing Spider-Man, which is so, um, it's pretty funny. So I called him, called up Bob Layton, my old boss. And all of these guys are famous. Um, and they were gracious enough to help me out. They didn't do it for the money. They just said, oh, you got a new job? You know, I'm like, yeah, and I'm trying to do this and then that. And so they did it to help me, you know, um, to um, make me look good, you know. And um, and Tops was like, oh, my God, we got John Ramita and all that. And I had a collection of all of them in a binder, including all the Lord of the Rings autographs. I had a, everything because they would at the end of the year, they would give us samples of stuff, you know. And I had like a binder this big of like everybody's autograph from all the movies I did and all this stuff. And that got, that got ripped off. Who knows how much thousands of dollars those things were worth. I might've been maybe 40, 50 grand stolen in one, one bag. That's when you do when you let painters in. Um, or yeah, we had a guitar guy missing. <laughs> uh, so, um, and I try, and at the time I was, I trusted everybody at the time. Um, until six years ago, I lost all of that. I used to be a hippie type of person where it's like, you know, you hug, you don't shake hands type of thing. And, uh, and then after I got ripped off six years ago, it just, I lost trust in a lot of stuff, but that's another story. But um, sketch cards, so that was the first sketch card series, Marvel Legends. And, um, and I used to talk to the salespeople and they were like, that was a hit that sold through. Like, why don't you do it again? And for some reason, Tops didn't want to do another series. It wasn't, um, I think at the time at Tops, if it didn't sell 2 million, it's not worth doing, you know? And, and those numbers decreased as the years go by. Um, um, so, that was sort of the war. I remember two million being the thing where it has to make two million for it to be worth it, you know. At that on. time, you were not drawing. Uh, you were not drawing on any of those cards at that time yourself, though, were you? No. So this is um, for the Mars. For yeah, I did Marvel Legends. So what they would use me for, and this is how I got more. So then there was other editors who would be doing Star Wars. Um, um, wrestling or whatever, or even though we would trade off sometimes, um, or something else. It was usually just two editors, and then later I think they made it into three. But um, it was just um, me. At the time it was me and Josh Joshua Izzo, and we were working on the on the Marvel set, and then Josh left the company during the set. So I, I got to finish it and do the sketch card part, which he, luckily he didn't have to deal with. Um, so later on, so that was the first thing. And whether it was success financially or not, um, Tops liked what, what I produced and how I got people to draw on it. And the quality of it was really good. I, I always, even Marie Severus and, people who know comics um, stepped in and helped me. And I, I wish I had all those drawings. It really hurts me that um, the personal ones I got to keep, I don't have, you know, someone else had them and sold them for money. And it went to me, it meant memories and all this, you know, but to other people it's just, and there's one right now who's, sold, who's selling my stuff on one of the GBK sites. And I said, you know, and no one believed it. I'm like, this is stolen. You stole it from me. This was in my box. And no, oh, never mind. I don't want to get into negative stuff. But anyway, hopefully you can cut this stuff <laughs> to what you need. 
but going forward, um, so they wanted to do other sketch cards. So I think they started doing um, Star Wars was the next one. So the editor saw what I did with or, or past sketch cards. I think the second one actually was GPK-4, um, ANS-4, which I started doing garbage. I started editing garbage mail pages by, um, I started as an assistant editor. And then by, and, and what happened was, since they, they always tell me like, we didn't hire you as an artist, we hired you as an editor and this and this. So, you know, your drawing is only limited. We don't want you doing the cards or anything. And I saw the artist that they were hiring for the second or third um, series of AS was like, some of them were like, oh, you know, like even I could paint better than that. And I'm like, and I'm like, I don't consider myself a painter. And I still don't. And because um, I'm not. And um, you're a painter, you're a good painter, you know. What I do, I, if you had a gun to my head, that's how good I could paint. Enough where if you put a gun to my head, I could paint <laughs> at least to save my life. You know what I'm I mean? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm good enough to save my life, you know, but I'm not, no way. I know I haven't, because I know what I want to see if I painted it, but I can't do it, the, you know, the way that people do it, you know? I'm like, how do they do that? How do they get to do that? It's like, I want to do that, but no matter what, I can't, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting close though, yeah. getting close. <laughs> Um, nevertheless, the stick with sketch cards, and you guys got to keep me on track here. Um, EPK four was the second one, and and my rules for sketch cards at the time was the person had to be a professional in the industry and had something published already, or associated with the brand in some sort of way artistically. You know, um, and there was no, no beginners, no such thing, no beginners, you know. And um, so those were their first rules. And um, they only get this much um, per card. And um, I didn't make the rules up per card, but, you know, and then. I said, well, we need to give them something else since they're doing it for so cheap. And then they're like, well, we'll give them seven or eight returns. And at the time you had to do 200 cards at a dollar fifty. I did that back when I started 200, yeah. 200, 400. You yeah, got yeah. 50 a card. That was what you got paid. And it, and it was either 200 cards or, or nothing, right? Or something, That's right? right? That's right. right. And, and, and I guess you and I got burnt out at the same time doing the Star Wars. Because how many, because what I would do is watch the movie and take photographs of the scenes that I want, because I don't want to do the internet that everybody else is seeing. You know what I mean? So, and get, you know, so I would watch these movies over and over and pause them and click and then pause and boom. And then after like the six or seven series, I was just like, I had enough. I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I did it as a favor because I would do them at night for free. The tops wouldn't pay me to do sketch cards. Crazy. <laughs> um, not the Star Wars ones, but at Lord of the Rings. When I did the Lord of the Rings, I did I, and and I would do I did so much stuff for free. And they're like, "Well, you're on payroll. You know, that's your job." But I'm like, to do my job, I can't be able to draw this, so I got to do it at home. You know, well, that's your. You know, that's, that's, that was, you know, that was the, I don't know, but that, you know, so I, I didn't get paid. So but what they did that was dumb because at the time they didn't, we didn't know what was the secondary value market. And they thought at the time, oh, ha, 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 you know, they were like, oh, so keep 30, 40 for yourself. Oh, keep 20 or 30 for yourself as payment. I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> I never got those, but okay. No, well, um, I didn't get paid for drawing them. So their payment was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> take a stack, you know, and, um, you know, and and I, I thought, oh, yeah. And, there's the, and meanwhile, they're like, he took a stack for drawing. <laughs> Not knowing years later 
that like wow you know and i would call and i and, and ira friedman and i was just like remember i still got these cards you know i still have them um and um but i don't sell them like i see people sell like blank sketch cards that was the other rule i i made like you're not allowed to show these cards to anyone you're not allowed to reproduce them you're not allowed to draw any profanity any you know thing anyone likeness of your family your dog or anything like that um uh, that sort of thing um and those rules were really tight but the reason why i wanted professionals was because they would already known that so you don't have to explain that and they already have the the um business um these days, you know, you hire someone, even no matter how good they, they're, they're posting it up already. It's like, no, no, if you're printing, you can't post it up or, you know, yeah. no, you can't make prints. What, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> and if and if you were professional and you'd done stuff, you would have known this. already. You know, so um, that's why I didn't want to deal with beginner, beginners. But also you didn't know where the beginners were. Um, they were hard to find. I, why, what I would do is go to conventions and when people would show me their work and be like, oh, great. You're like, you want to do garbage bill kids? You know, da, 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 you want to do this? So that's how I met Leron Dijarnet. So I stopped. I'm like, hey, you want to do garbage bill kids? <laughs> and, um, and some others. But um, that's how sketch cards and what I would do for every editor was you need to explain what sketch art, sketch art cards are if you're, let's say, doing Star Wars. You need to explain to Lucasfilm what is a sketch card. So to do that, they need to bring in Jeff Zapata. So Jeff, here's the card, draw on it, show what a sketch card might look like. So I would draw the first sketch cards of every series, and but it wouldn't be for... for um, for packaging, it would go to the studio. The studio would see it and they'd be like, oh, we get it. All right, great. And that looks like them. All right, we got it. And make just make sure everyone has the same likeness like this guy's doing, you know? And I'm like, great. So, you know, but little did we find out later, especially with Lord of the Rings, that there were people that were willing to do these marvelous paintings. I think Lord of the Rings was the first one we did where we saw how great people can do stuff. You know, um, I did marker colored pencil ones when I started seeing them, because I was doing them like, actually I wasn't even doing photo uh, reference at the time. I was just drawing my versions of them from looking from memory and being a comic book artist. I, I was like, oh, I know how to draw this. These guys without, you know, I'll draw the comic book version of them. And, and the Lord of the Rings people love it. They're like, yeah, that looks like him, but yet it's like not even in the movie, you know, but it's like, that's great. You know, so, I was like, so that's, what I, that's what I did. And then later when I did the color ones, I, I took actual frames and, 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 and did the color ones because I was seeing what other people were doing. I was like, Are you still yeah. working with sketch cards now or have you moved on to other things? Uh, what happened is, and I don't know if that hap this happened to you, after doing so many sets, your eyes start start getting really bad. And 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 I said, the sketch cards are doing it. Because I used to be able to look at my phone and look at the details and all that, <laughs> you know, and then draw, you know, from there. And then I started noticing as more cards, I couldn't use my blind eye anymore when I could have. And I think it was from trying to focus on little things so much with my blind eye and then refocusing on something else and then doing that and doing them. I don't think they're healthy for your eyes. I'm not sure. You should look into that. To, uh, uh, to avoid eye ulcers and things like that, you have to look into the distance for about, I think at least, I think it's about 10 minutes. For, for every four hours of close-up work, you have to look into the distance for 10 minutes every yeah. four hours. That's but it's great. still, yeah, it's still up. <laughs> you need to write but, a book. Yeah. You need to write Do a book. <laughs> you know, and I hate putting on glasses, you know, like, you know, mm. um, but now I have to, when because my eyesight is just no way the way. 
It was a network. I know as well. The phone as well. Like the phone. I have to print my references because I don't like looking at a screen. It yeah it annoys me. So that's you know, that's how I started um stop doing them because I, I was and also each set I started doing less and less different takes on things because I try to do something. I, I think you do the same. You're like, well, what take can I do differently on this set? You know, otherwise you of, get burned out of it and right, you just can't do right. it anymore. Sometimes you want to do just portraits, and then other ones like, oh, let me do scenes, and the other ones like, oh, let me do ones of just like a lot of space, you know? Because I did I one always, set. I always did just drawing. explosions. That's all I did for that set. Just explosions. Yeah. That's fun. I consider you such like one of the, like the premier. Um, <laughs> um, um, Explosion eyes. No, what do you call that? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my mind's bleeding, but like, um, like, like, o like O'Keefe, you know, um, a person who does um, landscapes, excuse me, landscaping and, and moments of time of, during the day and night, you know, she, you know. They are moments that mean a lot to me, but back to yeah. you. Exactly, and you capture it very well, and I see what you're getting at, and I love that. You know, oh, totally appreciate that. But we'll get back to you uh, with uh, what. What are you working on now? Uh, as either, if you if you all right, so we with sketch cards and why. All right, um, we finished that. Anything else with sketch? And I also started the program for sports, the um, sketch card program for sports, and I had to do the same thing. You know, draw. Uh, a sports star and then they're like well can you get us more artists and i'm like i am um, i'm already working i was stretched so thin so i got a guy named um michael kong who i hired before but i also knew he was a sports fanatic you know and i'm like here's michael kong he'll do the rest for you you know he'll get you the artist and plus he'll be one of your major great artists for your sports set you know but um and another quick thing, um, story on sketch cards, shape sketch cards, if you want to know the origin of that. Yes, that would be great. It, it was a monster that I made that I wish I never made, actually. And it, and it wasn't, and I still have the prototype somewhere. Um, and hold on one second. Just in case they're right here. No, they're not, um, but I still have the prototypes. And what it was, I don't know if you guys remember in the 90s, people will get a statue of something dumb like a pig or a cow and give it to um, um, movie stars or celebrities to decorate. And then they would auction it off. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and nobody cared if it looked pretty or not. They just like, oh, look, a movie star decorated this and signed it and now I want to buy it you know so I was working on a project like that with pigs for <laughs> for uh, my boss Ira Friedman who was doing something on the side for um um for charity and um and he helped me hey can you help me design this pig you know we want to do a statue and all this and and when I was doing this and I was like and this is what I always did at Tops was like, how can I apply this to cards? And I said, you know what sucks is that we depend so much on artists and stuff like that for sketch cards and the autographs, you know, as um, extras for these card sets. But we don't get the directors or the writers or, um, or maybe, um, you know, those type of people to, to do things besides just sign, you know? And wouldn't it be great if we did a Star Wars thing, you know, let's say if you're doing Star Wars, you just have a helmet shaped of a um, stormtrooper and you let the writer, director, producer, actor, or whoever design it any way they want. It's 12 o'clock. Oh. Sorry about that. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. 
I'm so sorry. Sell it at Cook. I'm so sorry. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I have a club where I am. That's an old joke. I had the timing. Um, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> It's quite foreboding that voice. It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like a yeah, 12 o'clock. <laughs> I am so oh. sorry. <laughs> you got Boris Karloff clock. I like that. Um, <laughs> okay. So, unless, so, anyway, so what we're, um, so the shapes of sketch cards. And they were like, wow, this, that's a great idea. You know, and I'm like, great. So you're going to have, you know, um, Mark Hamill design, you know, it was for people who don't know how to draw. That's what it was for, you know, and then they would sign it, you know, in the back, you know, and you look, look at this design, you know, this checkered pattern of, you know, done by, you know, Mark Hamill or whatever. And, and it's like, wow, you know. And that's what I was trying to copycat, that sort of feeling. But all I do is hand in the idea and they're like, great. But then after that, I lose control. I don't know what happens. So they got the idea of like, well, let's try to make it hip and we'll get underground artists, like the kind that spray on sneakers and design sneakers. And, the and, they, have, artist, yeah. and they have like one name, like, you know, street names, you know, um, you know, crud or something like that or you know something like that you know and so it was really like almost um graffiti arts um um to do them which i think became a total failure you know and then then they started shaping them to different forms let's say for for garbage bill because and this was um i might have been after i left like into a garbage can you know and artists did like, you know, some great ideas with that, but I, I, I hate limiting artists to a shape where now everyone has to draw a garbage can or like shape of a garbage can. Now everyone, you're an artist. You don't need me to draw you a garbage can shape, you know? So then they became these things that, but I'm glad that years later, um, there were artists who knew how to like, well, let me make something out of this shape, you know? and and do something creative. And, but it was the true story. They were never meant for artists to draw on. They were meant for people who didn't know how to draw to design them any way they want. And that were famous for something else um, to do. So Which is a pretty that, neat idea, actually. The idea is really good. They still should do it. <laughs> there's like, send it to the art because there's, there's people that, and the other thing I got the idea from was they used to show once in a while President Doodles, you know, where um, from the, you know, they got um, sheets of paper from different presidents and stuff they would doodle while they were on the phone. And I found that interesting. So that interesting. Is cool. That's, that's like psychology on a piece of paper right there. Yeah. So I thought, I want that on cards. You know, I want to see their personality that you don't see on screen or whatever, or how they think. Through. They needed to be left in a canteen for dinner time, didn't they? When everyone's sitting down having the dinner, and <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and, but um, but that was the original idea. So I guess that's my end for sketch card talk as far as um. Um, and whether I still do them, I only do them when someone I like or has a good idea um, wants me to. I have my own sketch stock. I still have a pile of old stuff, but I still, I never draw on them because if, for me to draw on them, I really want to put on the glasses and be the old Jeff Zapata that used to do them and be better than I was before even though but my eyes are so bad I, i'm scared to to look at them you know and what i'll do is probably burn them on camera live just to someday blank sketch cards and burn them live on camera and be people cry. Cry. maybe one <laughs> one at a time it's like see this this is star wars 
you know, galaxy, this. Oh, you're going to have collectors like crying for all over yeah. the No, oh, he's killing me. No. Oh, I love the idea. The more I say it, it's like, <laughs> what? Amazing. We'll call it what, what you know, what, what the deck. <laughs> what the deck. Awesome. That's a good what one. The, you know, it's like, what the heck? Like, what the deck will burn a hole for you. Everyone so, heard here first. It's going to be, it's going to be quite something. <laughs> well, this is with me at Tops all the time. Like, that's like, I remember one time they came in and, and they asked me, like, uh, for GPK, I may have been. Um, and they were like, we need something to show, like, this is a bigger pack and it has more cards than ever and it has gum and it has this and it has that and, 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 and even has a kitchen sink in it, you know. It's like what we call them, like you know, you know, giganto packs or giant packs or super packs. And I was like, no, you know. And they're like, that's why we brought you in. You're always good with names, you know, to come up with a gimmick, you know. I'm like, well, as a kid, whenever time I thought something was great or awesome, I used to say, wow, that's mega, you know. And I should call them mega pack. <laughs> and was mega packs and that's and so i end i end up calling a lot of things like names and um um you know chrome cards or you know um i remember for um planet of the apes we had um suede cards they were made out of suede so they were almost like gorilla fur like fuzzy like peach fuzz cards mm -hmm. I'm not sure they were also embossed in the same time and it was supposed to give you that gorilla feel or stuff like that and uh that sounds kinky and yeah and they're like you know what you know what do we call them like you know how do we describe them because you can't call them peach fuzz and i said you know it's planet of the apes you know i don't and how do we get them that we know it's and i said i got it we call it simian suede <laughs> Simeon Swain. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, the Simeon Swain card. So that, <coughs> I, like, I wanted to get into advertising. I think I still should. I have so many ideas for commercials that um, that I would love to do that I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, uh, well, but, we'll have to wind this down a little yeah, bit before my creepy voice. All right, so we're done with sketch. So what's next? Uh, so well, next uh, two things. I'd like you to mention what you what you're allowed to mention of what you're working on now, and where people can find you. Oh, because okay. now everybody's want, going to want to find you before you burn your cards. All right. <laughs> no. Well, no. Nobody. <laughs> nobody asked me to sell them a blank card. Don't bother. I've had people try, and I get so angry with them that I, uh, and I, you know, I don't want to lose a fan or anything, but I hate being asked that period. So, so yeah. what are you working on right now? Are you working on any comic books? I or? can't talk about it. It's okay. super secret. Okay. Don't uh, mention um, anything, but you are working on, you are still doing the, things. It's behind me. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you see, I got some superhero stuff here. Um, yep. Um, I got Fantastic Four and this and it's some GPK stuff and all of that. But what's great is um, um, it should be announced soon, but um, I'm not saying for which company or anything like that, but um, it has nothing to do with, uh, it has, um, it's not a trading card set or anything like that. Um, but, um, but it's an epic, epic epic project that um i've been wanting to do for years and it's sort of my bucket list thing where i could check off um and um what else i could say about it it's scary it's like almost writing a play and um wondering what, what opening night's gonna be the reaction you know and um because it's so different, so new, um, that I have no idea how people will receive it. 
and that's why I'm doing it for experiment. And I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for me. You know, I'm, uh, you know, well, everyone who's working on it, you know, are doing it for different, but, you know, um, the only way you can help anybody is by being a person to get things done, but to get things done, you got to love the doing, you know, and if you love the doing, if you love the doing, you could get things done. And then if you get things done, you can help. You. So um, that's my little philosophy of with the art and things in general, with that sort of stuff of creativeness. But, um, well, but we can't, we can't wait to, uh, we can't wait to, uh, to see what this is going to be. Will it be? I this hope year? They'll announce it. I think they'll announce it soon. Um, the company um, that that's doing it. And um, and then I'll be able to share a little bit, but even then, I don't want to tell anybody anything till till they see it, and and that sort of thing. But I just hope people like it. If not, hopefully they appreciate the um, the effort of trying to do something new. Certainly know? they will. Certainly they will. We'll certainly look out for it, don't we? When it comes out, we'll we'll chat about it and show it around. And yeah, I, I just uh, I'm always thinking about the future, the future, the future, the future, the future, and um, and for my future after this project is done, I'm probably going to want to take a break um, from drawing itself per se, as a you know with deadline, anything with a deadline, you know. And I'm going to try to start doing um, maybe some art classes that are serious and um, a parody of, of an art class. Not really. My friend, I have a friend named Bob Rush um, who has a technique who taught me how to draw um, things really quick in a different way, whether you know how to draw or not. And um, he's, I'm helping him produce a show called the Bob Rush Show. Well, he'll, he looks a lot like Bob Ross, <laughs> but, for um, but, um, but, um, he's great. He, he was just wandering. He was in my porch one day. I don't know. He was begging or something. I don't know what it was, but, um, but he showed me this technique and I was just like, you're, a, that's amazing. You know, he looks a little like me too. I don't know why, but, um, but he has a beard and, and he looks exactly like the guy. Um, but anyway, but he taught me this technique. And he's going to have a show and um, showing how it's simple and how anybody can do it, whether you're a garbage bill kid art um, artist or a superhero artist. And you can't draw, but it might at least um, get people started into if you especially if they're afraid of markers, pens and pencils. Um, it's a way of doing it where um, you don't need any of that. It's really going back to childhood, um, like finger painting, you know, so. Well, that sounds um, amazing. And what's great when you do this, you feel the, the drawing as you do it, instead of holding a tool that's, that has the luxury of touching the paper, not it's you. A tactile experience instead of just, yeah. 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 Okay. You know, so. Yeah, I was going to show you that, but I don't know if we're going to have time after all I'm that. I'm afraid we're going to have to pretty yeah. much end it. Yeah, this has been a fascinating trip. Lindsay, do you have anything you'd like to ask before we wrap it up? Uh, I was kind of curious what materials you used for uh, for most of your artwork, if you always stick with the same ones or switch no, up. I, I mix what I have a thing. I kind of believe in that. Um, I don't know who said it. It was Van Gogh or somebody, you know, if you don't have red, use blue, you know, that's, sort of <laughs> you know, <laughs> and yet, I, you know, and there, there are a thing called friendly mistakes, you know, you know, mistakes are your friends, you know, if you know how to, if you know how to use them, you know, um, but um, I started out with, um, design markers you know designer um you know prismacolor which i still think is uh, superior than for some reason than the copic um the copics i dealt with bleed and they and they don't blend as i don't know for some reason the designer um when i see my designer marker stuff 
they look so much different and better than my Copic cop Copic stuff. So, um, but designers are expensive and they're not refillable. You know, um, mm -hmm. I got a huge old. So, so I had to relinquish my. You know, you had to save money just deal with something you could refill or get cheaper markers and and then um i did that for years just using that and i also used brush um, um i know how to ink and brush i don't know if you guys know what inking and brush is um it's a comic book um only a lot of people in the 60s and and the people i that taught me still use it where you don't use a pen you use a brush um which I could demonstrate really quick as well, but um, That's a real skill that takes a lot of practice to be able to do that. It's almost like um, you know how people do pinstriping. Yes, uh, it's pretty much that, and what it is, the lighter pressure you put on the brush, the thinner it is. The more pressure you put on the brush, the thicker it gets. But you get such an organic line than you do with a pen where you're trying to get a thick to thin line where you get more in one stroke you know and the other thing i try to teach people that they say oh i don't know how to draw i'm like do you have a signature and they'll show the signature i said you don't know how many figures you just drew in your signature good point you know and believe it or not when you're doing that swoop that you're so used to you don't know you're actually doing a swoop of an arm you know, and that same movement that you do for that, you're gonna, if, if you try to draw instinctively, you're gonna do that arm, that movement because they become jerky reactions where, you know, they look organic because you're not there doing it slowly. You did it in a gesture that that's a confidence. That that's, I don't know if it's good sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you definitely for inking brush, you need confidence and, and, and you'll like, like inking, when I do inking, it's a totally, I have to almost do that in a separate season. I have to put away all my pencils, all my markers, and just have my inks around. And then be an inker and be in a calm head and wear a different hat. I, 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 I cop in a different zone. No, yeah, different mindset. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then that, you know, um, and I also hate after I draw it having to ink over it again it's like redrawing it again um so some, sometimes and um especially when i do pro uh, projects where there's a deadline I'll, I'll i'll you know i'll do and in comics that's how it is it's someone pencils someone inks and then someone colors it and that's how you get it out on time you know so um i have been blessed to have great partners in inking when i have certain projects like uh um, um, Fred Wheaton and Chris Meeks, who, what it was, I didn't just ask them, we actually became friends because we mutually love our art. We loved each other's stuff. Like Chris Meeks, before he even did his first GPK part. I'm a big fan of Chris Meeks. Yeah, before he did his, I'm a big fan of him too. Um, and he was a fan of mine. So, or, so that's how I kind of met him. He said, Hey, I like the way you do garbage bell kids. He's like, when I do garbage bell kids, you know, I'm going to do it like the way you do it. You don't mind. And that actually I get a few artists that call me like, I'm really inspired of the way you do garbage bell kids. And I really like the ones that call, not, I don't like the ones, but I appreciate when they admit like, Hey, I'm influenced by you. And, 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 and I had to get, I, I don't know, early in the days, us sketch artists were very competitive. You know, I want to be better than this guy or I want to, you know, try to, you know, you know, I, as far as like, you know, iron sharpening iron type of way, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if someone got this high score, then it's like, oh, now I got to beat that high score. And I tried to beat that high score in some sort of way in your own mind or, or whatever. And, and uh, so... I forgot where I was getting at with that, but um, but you know that's that you know it's, it's that same mind melt of um, well yeah changing hats for different techniques and yeah. different tools and and uh, and, 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 and all with us and what was great with Chris and and, and me was uh, you know it, uh, that's what I was getting at like you know we can be competitive I'm saying but um, 
it took me a while to figure out that, you know, people were calling, I hate the word, but a legend of something of some sort, which to me just means like you're old and you've been doing this for a long time, you know, doesn't mean that I'm great at anything. It just means like you're, a, you're, a, you know, it's almost like being like, you know, infamous, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and uh, so I like, you know, I don't, I don't pay attention to the bad stuff if people say anything bad about me and I don't pay attention to the good stuff either because if I listen to either one your head's either going to shrink or get big so yeah. I just rather keep it you know but uh but it took me a while to so when I saw people copying me to not be like oh, oh where I was like I get it now I'm I'm one of those guys that like when I was in a basement copying Neil Adams drawing on a box, there's a kid out there drawing on a box, drawing like me, you know? And- That's a Big compliment. That's really something for you. you know, and, and it took me a while to figure that out and not have a big head where I had enough fans tell me like, you don't know who you are in conventions or, and, and then get testimonials of, Sorry. Tell me. It's just good to feel appreciated. That's that's amazing. And I don't share stories and or the notes and things like that, but um, it made me realize I'm like, I don't need to compete anymore about anything. You know, I've I've affected I without me knowing I affected people in ways I never imagined or thought I did or thought I counted for much for anything. And uh, you realize you've been inspiring young artists around the world. Okay. Yeah. It's not surprising to get choked up. Yeah, and I know probably you guys have certain moments like that too, you know, but like when I you- teach, um, I teach kids art, and a lot of them they'll go, you're my favorite artist. I go, you don't know any other artists. <laughs> I'll show them uh, you, but it's so you. cute. Um, I, I mentioned my art teacher, Sharon Class. I'm still friends with her. If it wasn't for her, you, you guys, you don't know how important what the job you're doing and how and, and the effect that you're going to have. If it wasn't for my art teacher, Sharon Class, no way would I be sitting here talking to you guys. No way. These people are so underrated. You know, and so... Encouragement. Like, you know, you're worthwhile and you, I, you have to skip. guys are making me go back in the time machine. And like I said, I'm old. And, um, and you know, so many memories and so many travels and um, so many emails and letters and people and, and everything where, like I said. Thank you so much for sharing it all with us. It's been, oh, it's I, been really, really interesting and quite, quite emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, that it should be. And, um, and you know, that's why I said I'm going to take a break and my future projects are going to be like podcasts like yourself, um, video um, classes, that sort of thing. Well, like we're going to share everything that you want us to share to, to anyone who happens to listen or watch the video. We're going to share everything. And, and well, definitely can... give me a link and I'll put it on my Facebook and hopefully... Um, you know, GPK fans will, will come in and who cares? I don't know if they do. You know, where, I don't can, know. where can people find you? Um, on Facebook. Um, if There's probably a bunch of Jeff Zapata's, but if you just write, you know, Jeff Zapata Facebook tops, you'll probably find the right guy. You know what I mean? And um, um, because I have, you know, I'm the only Jeff Zapata. I think that has tops or as or an artist or something like that. It might be one more, but I think he quit. <laughs> and, Are you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram and it's the um, lowercase and underscore um, Jeff underscore Zapata. Okay. Are you anywhere and, else? Do you have a website? On Instagram. And no, I haven't done the website yet. And um, I'm 
I've been wanting to do one for years, but I, when I do it, I'm like, I want to make sure it's right. And it's got everything. I've been stuck in that. I've been stuck with that for years, going back yeah. over myself, going, no, I don't want this one now. I'm making a new one. That's not good enough. I've got a bunch of students having a go at it now. So let's see, see how they go. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm not also like the most computer, like the only thing I know about computers is design applications. After that, I know nothing. You know what I mean? Photoshop, sure. Give me, you know, you know, illustrate, sure, you know, whatever. And do like Lindsay and get some students to do it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, uh, I'd like to thank you so much, Jeff. And I and maybe I thank you for um keeping the flame alive on sketch cards and um giving um sketch artists a voice or uh at least an outlet to voice you know i hope your future guests um as well um have the same great experience i'm having oh well this is it's it's all on you you have wonderful stories to tell and i hope once all your, once all your new projects come out maybe you'd like to come back and, and talk about those new projects and uh, let's hope otherwise i might be hiding <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you so much jeff uh, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for Jeff. having me. Really nice to meet you. Oh, it's great meeting you ever in the UK. Um, also, mm. um, I have a good friend in the UK um, besides um, Garth and, and uh, you know, John McRae. I don't know if you know John McRae. Um, but I also, um, I got to work with recently um, and uh, without hinting at anything um with uh rebecca sharp um who's on your end of the, and um i got to work with her professionally um on a project so that was fun and um i think she had fun but we're not allowed to talk about it till later anyway. so you're just going to explode with new projects soon that's going to be awesome yeah um yeah i guess so and this <laughs> trying to keep a uh, uh, a life and a wife happy you know <laughs> and it's hard to do both in the same time okay well thank you again jeff this has been an experience thank you All so right. much so we're gonna thank you so much. we look forward to seeing what you do <laughs> love to everyone take care bye, -bye.